This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here. Uh, coming at you from the Sorgatron Media's in Excuse me, Scorchon Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. It's been one of those nights, guys. Uh, and uh, this is the Indie Mayhem Show, where we talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling and uh, have a lot of fun getting to know these guys out, uh, out there that you guys may be seeing in the ring, or maybe you should be checking out, or you should be requesting in your area, perhaps. If you want to reach out to the show, please hit us up at uh, goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412-206-WMS0. If you have any questions for anybody, we have announced over at the Indie Wrestling.us Facebook page page or the same way you think we should be talking to on this show or any panels you want to see like we've been talking the intergender one here uh lately uh people have been responding to that of course but if there's anything you want to see like that or any group of people or or anything like that let us know on those lines and also you can subscribe to the show uh look for the indie mayhem show on your podcast catcher or a youtube or facebook and of course uh check out the wrestling mayhem show master feed uh super feed i'm sorry if you want to check out everything wrestling going on at wrestling mayhem show dot com so i'm really excited uh this is somebody that's been on on my uh uh, chat list for a while and i just happened to catch up with them uh on the instagrams the other uh a week ago and uh somebody i've seen here locally with the renegade wrestling alliance i also seen that he's been popping up with monster factory out east there but gray wolf raventhorn is on the line with us how you doing tonight sir a roof it's good to be here. I'm well. How are you? Very good. Very good. Like I said, I was really entertained seeing a couple matches here uh, locally in the RWA, and uh, really glad to get you on the show here with us. Much appreciated. I'm glad you have me on. I'm honored. So, first of all, like I said, and, and please, guys, go check out the the graphic. There's a definitely he's got a very very visual style to go along with what we're going on what we're talking about here uh as if you can t- can't tell by the name but uh well first you know we, we kind of like to do a little icebreaker for people if they haven't caught you guys out there or caught you out there or follow you on twitter or anything um what was kind of your earliest memory of professional wrestling what, what kind of like maybe hooked you uh back in the day you know this is a question i'm always asked um if you give me have a little bit of a, a cold, it's been rainy here, and uh, I'm a little congested tonight, so forgive me, please. Um, you know, I'm often, you know, asked this sort of question, and I was always drawn to, you know, any sort of combat. Um, you know, the gladiatorial arenas and jousting. I was always a big fan of jousting and anything, you know, great epics of, you know, Ejo the Mad and, and, you know, the like, any, you know, and Heracles were all brought up with these sort of tales. And, you know, when, when I first seen professional wrestling, um, it just sort of all that come to life. These large in life characters, the biggest, strongest, fiercest athletes, all fighting in this grand spectacle in this great arena in front of thousands and thousands of people. And there's sort of the larger than life athletes um, on a scale that you don't see every day. And that sort of just really drew me in uh, when I had first seen it because it was all that, all those tales really come to life for me. And I feel like that was really the embodiment of everything grandiose you would always you know, think about in that sort of sense. That's great. So, so you know, kind of going from from that, like, where did you go from like watching this as you know, you know, younger you, uh, young, young Grey Wolf, perhaps, uh, to saying, you know, was it an immediate? I have to get in the ring to do this. I want to become a pro wrestler. I think if it wasn't immediate, it's very shortly thereafter. You know, you start body slamming your friends, and people tell you to stop, and um, it sort of becomes a hobby <laughs> and a passion of yours. And um, and I was always known for that. You know. Um, if you follow me, as some people will see that uh, I always hashtag the term throwing people. And I, I like to say I, I throw people. That was from a very early age. You know, I'd get in trouble as a youth for, you know, throwing people, throwing not necessarily people that weren't my friends. But they tell you, no, stop wrestling with your friends. And so it was from a very early age. And I, I think it was just once I'd seen it, it had become instilled in me. And it was just a passion of mine and something I, I was really drawn to and thought that that's the stage I want to compete on as well. Um, so it was a remarkable thing, and I was I was instantly drawn to it. Excellent. So, I mean, was it easy for you? Um, were you always you, know, you? You have a very bodybuilder physique, it seems, and uh, and I've seen from your 
videos uh, we'll talk about later and stuff. Uh, were you always yeah. kind of uh, uh, in that physical side of things uh, before uh, getting into training, or is this something that's come from uh, your years at the business? This is something I really don't don't touch on too much. Actually, that's a very very good question. I actually appreciate you asking it. Um, as a youth, I was actually very strong. Mm. Um, I wasn't in the best shape. Um, I was I was a little bit heavier, you know, a little huskier. Um, and I wasn't a bodybuilder by any means, you know. I wasn't the child who'd take his shirt off, you know. I was the one though who would always find the heaviest thing that I could, the heaviest stone or the heaviest log or whatever it happened to be, and just be able to lift it, you know. So that was always a natural inclination of mine was to be able to lift things that were unnaturally heavy compared to you know, my peers and other people my age. So that was more my thing. Um, later in my later teens, I got into bodybuilding and powerlifting and competed a little bit in the bodybuilding circuit um, and really developed, you know, trained myself to lift in that capacity and to diet in that capacity and really pay attention to the, how the muscles work and how the body works and physiology and muscle function and all sorts of the science behind um, just instead of just lifting heavy stones and up, you know, heavy logs and things. Um, so in my teens, I did gravitate more towards the bodybuilding a little later on. Um, before I began wrestling, uh, I'd started uh, powerlifting, although, albeit not competitively. I did go to a few powerlifting meets with a friend of mine who had competed, and I'd been training very seriously for it. It just never came to fruition. And I also, you know, been backstage at a strongman and things like that. So later on, uh, not quite in my early youth, but later on as a teenager and then thenceforth after, pursued the, the strength and the body and the conditioning and things like that. Excellent. So, so is that, you know, was that something that, uh, you know, when you started getting into the training, like, were you already into it at, at that point or did it, is it, you know, come out of that? Or it, it, did that help you when you get into, got into wrestling training, I guess? Uh, it certainly did, especially with the discipline and it puts you a cut ahead. I think of everyone else, if your physique is already developed, because I see so many people enter the wrestling world. I'm in no kind of shape, you know, they're not physically conditioned, they don't look very good, they just have a desire and passion to wrestle, and there's nothing wrong with that, and they train. Mm -hmm. But it's only being in good physical condition and understanding, especially with that discipline, to be able to train a certain way and condition yourself to be able to uh, put your mi mindset to a certain thing. Um, it really, I think, puts you just a step above, um, because you don't have to start wrestling and then worry about it. You already developed the physique, and now you're expanding upon your repertoire you already have. So for me, that was a little, um, I, it was a little beneficial. Most definitely was. Mm -hmm. um, and I was amazed to find out again, you're, you're, you're kind of a new, a new uh, face for me here in the area. Uh, but I understand you've been in the business for about 13 years. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. It's, it's my 13th year in the business now. Oh, wow. Um, and it seems like more and more, I, I don't know if just with the advent of social media or something, it seems like you're always on my radar since I, I first followed you. Uh, so, uh, so, so, you know, uh, you, you know, you didn't start, you know, a lot of everybody gets, you know, kind of the persona out of training that they want, but uh, a gray wolf Raventhorn definitely kind of exudes this, uh, this, this kind of, uh, 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 personality here. Like how did, how did, where did gray wolf come from? Well, you know, I often, I coach students as well. Mm -hmm. I host seminars and, and, uh, I was a coach at the Monster Factory for a couple of years and have taken a brief hiatus from coaching there just because of circumstance. But one thing I always tell the students is everything you do, especially character-wise, should be a natural extension of yourself. Otherwise, it's going to be inauthentic and it's not going to come off as, as really you're not going to be able to devote a certain passion to it. And, you know, this is really just is myself. You know, I tell them, take yourself and amp them up to 11. And that's really what, um, what it is. Mm -hmm. Um me is just taking the things everything i believe you know and everything if you'll probably if you follow me on social media you see a lot of my ideals that i put forth and a lot of my ideas and philosophies and practices of life um that carry over into what i do in the wrestling ring because i would like it to bear influence especially because of the children that come to the shows you know if you can in some way influence them in a positive light in a positive way i always like to do that so what i do in, in the ring is just a natural extension of who i am i know people say you know i i hear it all the time and i really i i find it almost humorous that you know i i hear i love your gimmick well i'd say yes i i appreciate the compliment that's really nice if in fact it were a gimmick mm -hmm. you, you know um 
like what a lot of people don't know about me, they see me coming out, you know, the fur. And I, as we had discussed before the conversation, I had a battle axe, you know. Mm-hmm. I come out, they don't realize is I have these, you know, things all over my walls and suits of armor and sconces and torch holders. And uh, I mean, this is really who I am and what I live and what, you know, this is just my passion and who I am. So um, you're, it, oh, go ahead. And it's just, no, it just extends forth into, into the realm of wrestling as well. So that, that's awesome. So it is it is like something that kind of comes out there and it, and it really, um, you know, it, it kind of makes sense uh, from that. Um, also, like, you know, th- this is something, uh, you know, when I'm watching the indies, um, you definitely stick out also because we usually don't get a lot of bodybuilders across the indies. Right. Um, there's people with different yeah. body types, obviously. So you stick out from that. And I don't know what is what the scene is like out, uh, you know, in your area where you, where you are, but um, you know, you're you're somebody that steps out there that looks like you step right out of, you know, what we see on TV as far as these built guys, especially, you know, what's popular, you know, in the uh, in the '80s and stuff too. Uh, is, is that kind of stick out for you, or, or are you finding like, you know, um, how does your style kind of fit with what's going on out there? Well, you know, wrestling is always in flux and it's very dynamic. Mm-hmm. And what's popular one day might not be popular the next. And I feel it's always important to have a good foundation and fundamentals from which to build. And I believe personally part of that is having a good body and having a good physique um, just because it's part of a demonstration. You know, what we do is mostly visual. Um, and I like to express that also to my students that this is a very visual sport and, and, and um, entertainment industry that we're in, that people are going to judge you in the first 10 seconds that they see you. So you want to put out a good package, you know. And it's not just about the visual presentation um, for wrestling itself. You know, this is just the philosophies that carry over from other walks of life. Always trying to better yourself. Always trying to, for me, it's like molding clay and creating the ideal, um, not just in the physical sense, but in the mental sense. And in the, in the, I guess you could say the spiritual sense um, to a degree that you always want to advance yourself and always want to better yourself. And I believe what you do physically also carries into other facets of your life. If you have the discipline, discipline yourself physically, then you will also carry mentally. You'll be able to um, condition yourself also to learn and to grow and become the best person and best version of yourself you can be. So I'm kind of sorry, it's a bit of a tangent I sort of went on there. But as it applies to wrestling itself, it does stick out a little bit. I mean, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of discipline with diet and, and um, a lot of guys don't have that, and that's okay because we're in such a business where you can have different body types. You know, you have your Abdullah the Butchers, you have your James Ellsworths, mm-hmm. you have the barbarian, the barbarian, and you know, um, the road warriors and such. And you all have all sorts of different body types, and it's really a beautiful industry to be in. Um, but yes, it does, I think, differentiate me in, in a certain way. And there are different areas, and I think the more elite you go, um, I mean, obviously, look at the WWE, many of the people are in very, very good shape. There are some bodybuilders there. Um, it's a different look than they had um, several years ago. They're a lot more athletic, a lot leaner. And I think you know, that has to do with certainly wellness policy has something to do with that, as well as just it being a different time when more athleticism, I think, and conditioning and um, competition, you know, the Japanese style has really had a tremendous influence over here. So you see stylistically different things than you had even 20, 30, even 10 years ago. So you have, see a lot more different styles. People tend to be a little bit smaller now, you know, the more, the higher up the, the more elite people tend to be a little small, do a lot more athletic things. And again, they say pro wrestling has evolved and I say yes and no. I think stylistically things come and things go and trends come and fads come. And what, as I said before, might be popular tomorrow, might not be popular today, but we have evolved in the sense that the athleticism is remarkable and you know, you're all seeing people, I feel even more than five years ago, you're all seeing a lot more people getting into shape just because it's expected of them, especially at a higher level. And again, with any, as with anything, you know, if you're at the highest level, you're going to see a lot more people conditioned and in better shape. And as you sort of trickle down, you see people that aren't as dedicated and it might not, you know, they might be the weekend warriors. So they're not dedicating full time to training in the gym and eating properly. You know, they just want to do it as a hobby on weekends for their friends and family. And that's okay as well. So you see different things on different levels, I believe. So it's sort of, again, a dynamic question because what you might see at the top, you might not see at the, at the more independent level. Absolutely. Uh, so being somebody, uh, you know, a lot of times when I talk to people who've been, been in the business like 10 years plus, usually they're still kind of grasping that online persona. And I, I have so much fun following you. Like I said, on Twitter, on um, uh, there's a couple of YouTube videos that you did out there that, that I shared to everybody in our, in our circles here. Um, you know, it, 
was it was it kind of easy to kind of uh, get on that platform and and kind of um, you know put put somebody like you know you you know Gray Wolf on on a on a social media platform like that that I think you don't see on there too often. You know, I I was it was like pulling teeth with me originally. You know, I <laughs> I remember harkening back to the days of MySpace. I didn't know what a MySpace was, let alone understand it. Um, and I was encouraged by my peers to get on. Oh, this is the new thing. This is what you're supposed to do. Everybody's doing it. I said, eventually, all right, all right, I'll get a MySpace. So I eventually had a MySpace back in the day. And then it was the same thing going over to Facebook. I didn't want a Facebook. Everybody's on there. Okay, I suppose. So for promotional purposes, I must sort of transfer over to Facebook as well. And you know, so originally it was a you know a bit of a difficult transition, especially me being uh, sort of averse to using technology. Um, I'm a little old fashioned, I suppose you could say in a way, though I'm learning, especially I'm not always big on the newest advances. I don't really care as long as I could use my basics, you know, the Facebook, the Twitter and the Instagram is relatively new in the past uh, year and a half or so. I've really been on the Instagram more heavily mm -hmm. just because it's a good promotional platform. I think just once I get the concept of it and understanding, I still to this day, there are things I don't understand and won't engage in. For example, Snapchat, I think is sort of silly and um this whole it's a TikTok, i think it's called i can't for the life of me wrap my head around that i've been shown video after video and just don't understand it um, <laughs> that's okay i don't understand yeah. those two platforms either and i'm in the business <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's really something i should have but it's just i i'm more comfortable um in written form i feel and you know facebook and then the twitter i can tweet and you know i'm becoming more comfortable with you know the photographic form you know with the instagram um, so I think it's becoming comfortable on using, utilizing different platforms as tools and um, sort of getting within my comfort zone of the YouTube. I like to put out creative content. So going more organically, I, I'm a little disinclined though in breaking out of my comfort zone and doing some live Facebook videos and such um, here and there. Um, There's just not a medium with which I'm terribly comfortable. I like to put out productions and nice products and something mm -hmm. people could digest and People, I feel like nowadays tend to want more organic material where they want to see, you know, what's really going on behind the scenes, especially with the advent of reality television and, you know, that whole resurgence of uh, insurgence of um, sort of just wanting to see what's real and not just the production, but what happens uh, beyond it. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting a little more comfortable doing that. Um, but just like any artist, you know, um, at heart, I'm an artist, you know, I had actually trained to um, studied Renaissance painting and sculpture originally many years ago um I had done some music um not so much poetry but i've done some writing and i've always been a i've always uh, been very creative and anything i could use as a blank canvas upon which i can uh illustrate a portrait i sort of will and that's you know when it comes to visual media uh, it's about the same thing where i'd rather present a product and something nice that people absorb and digest that has metaphor and meaning behind it rather than just something where I snap a button and I'm, they're just seeing me talk and do I, for, for me that personally, I, I think that's kind of boring mostly. <laughs> um, so I just don't understand how other people could enjoy it, but it's, I guess, keeping up with the times and, you know, breaking out of my comfort zone and perhaps going more into that form of media. Uh, you, you're talking about that. And I love that, that visual angle that's going on there uh, with you. I'm, I'm looking through your Twitter and I, I suppose in the appropriate way, you're doing one of those things where it appears that everything kind of lines up that like every third post are these like kind of, uh, I guess visual cards of some sort. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on there? Like I'm seeing things like conquer your limitations, what your attitude always believe, and you have so many of these too. Yes. Um, again, I like to keep people motivated, and I like people to know that they have the inner strength. You know, when I say, they call me the last warrior, this name I was given. I, well, I didn't choose my own name. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gray Wolf, yes, because it's very symbolic in Norse, you know, Norse culture. You know, the gray wolf, the power of the alpha male and, and fidelity and protecting your family and, you know, being savage when you must, but reserved in other situations. So, sort of that sort of uh, thing. The last warrior is actually a name given to me. And that isn't, you know, because I extend that into everything that I do. And um, yes, if you see, you'll probably talk about my Instagram, not my Twitter, where I have um, every third person. You look, um, Again, it's like a black canvas for me. You'll see the image that you can sort of look at and read it all the way down as as an uh, image. And I, I found that I could do this and that they lined up and I just sort of started playing with it and experimenting. But with these things, I, I really want to put forth. I want people to have something inspirational throughout the day that they can see. That maybe if they're in a dark place or they're having a hard time, that this might connect with them in some way. That they can see that and they can know that I do have the strength. You know, if they're doubting themselves, they can believe that they have the power. That even if they don't 
believe in themselves at the moment. They have someone that might believe in them and that might instill within them the power to overcome that, which is difficult or, or challenging at the moment. So that's really the theme you'll see, you know, the spirit of the warrior, the will to prevail. Um, that is uh, concurrent throughout my um, my Instagram feed. And even on my Twitter, and you'll see, you know, we post many motivational things throughout all platforms of social media. That's awesome. It's been a lot of fun to uh, follow you on these things and, and, and kind of learning more about you uh, from the, again, the little glimmers I've seen. So um, what are you kind of, you know, you talked a little bit about all the different styles and everything uh, earlier. So what are you kind of paying attention to, whether if it's people on the indies that are kind of grasping your attention uh, for something new or old that they're doing, um, or even what you're seeing maybe across TV or something like who's really got your attention or inspires you these days? Well, you know, I don't pay attention um, really to mainstream product. I, mm. I don't watch any television. Um, I don't even own a television, um, honestly. Um, what I really do pay good attention to is I try to keep abreast to sort of what's going on in, you know, the Ring of Honor a little bit, just because I have so many friends there and different promotions that, that work for them. And I really try to keep an eye on really what my friends are doing because it means so much, especially to me when they succeed. So I like to really know, you know, you have people like, and I want to give them a shout out just because I'm very, very proud of how hard they've worked. Nyla Rose and Sonny Kiss, who just got picked up by AEW, have been friends of mine for years. And I've seen Sonny, you know, when Sonny broke in and I watched Sonny bloom into the into the rest of that he's become. And it's just it's absolutely remarkable. Um, and you just have people that touch you. You know, there's so many to name that I feel I feel bad naming names because I don't want to exclude anyone because <laughs> I see so many valuable people and so many great people. Um you know, people like Mike Orlando, is, you know, who had come back again. He had a knee injury similar to mine, and he, you know, he overcome the obstacles. He's back on the indies. He's uh, doing remarkable, um, and he's a little safer than he was before. And I'm just very proud of how hard he has worked and how far he has come. Um, I know many people might not know him. He wrestled for the Monster Factory. Plunkett the Ogre came was overcoming a knee injury. Also, he had major ACL surgery. I was there right when, when he was running a drill, and he tore his ACL right in front of me. And so he's another one that's you know, going to be an up and comer. And there's just so many, so much good talent. I mean, if you look at the Monster Factory roster or the Future of Honor roster, uh, these these people are putting in a tremendous amount of work. And I'm very, very proud of of many of them, especially the ones who have been my students that I've helped to mentor. Um, also, if he's listening, Sizzlin' Stan Styles, you might want to give a listen, to, you know, a follow a follow to him. He's a very good friend of mine, and when we travel together. Uh, also, I'd like to give a shout out to one. Uh, good brother of mine, um, Tyson Creed, who's been traveling with me and I've been mentoring him. He's very new in the business, but he's learning very well and he's coming along very fast. Um, somebody I'm very proud of. Um, but to just, I, I could go on naming people all day long. Um, but for the most part, uh, I try to do it stylistically. Um, who bore me the most influence were people who had the power style, you know, years ago. You know, your Road Warriors, your Davy Boy Smith, he, um, you know, people like that who just, you know, the warlords and the barbarian who just get in there and they throw people the same way I throw people, you know, that the really strong, uh, powerful sort of characters really influenced me then. And that sort of still carries that as influence to me now. But now I'm trying to break out of my comfort zone, just being a power sort of wrestler and doing more athletic sort of things I haven't really done before. Um, and just because some of my peers are doing them, and but I'm trying to do them in a different way. So again, that's the artist in me coming, coming out and um, trying to relate it similar things to what they're doing in a much different way that's awesome so i, I say you've been around for a bit here what is the best and worst thing about indie wrestling for you so far the best and worst uh, this is wow that's really um that's really quite the dichotomy there um <laughs> this is a loaded question if you will there's so much good i i i really i i Everywhere I look, I, I see I see so much good. And this is an exercise because Tony Robbins is someone I look up to very, very much. You know, someone who's helped me through some dark times, and I'm really familiar with his material. And what he would say is that what you focus on is what you'll tend to find. So I tried really not to focus on the negative because I, I find that when you focus on the negative, you'll absolutely find you can find the negative in anything. Even that which might be ideal or perfect, you can seek within and find the negative. So I try really not to not to even focus on that because there's so much good and there's so much beneficial to so many people. You know, the camaraderie, the friendship. Um, there's about independent wrestling. You know, when you're, when you're at a smaller venue, you're more interacting with the crowd and you really get to know the fans on a personal level because they see you at these uh, places and they, and they reach out to you and they begin following you. You develop not just, you know, a fan um, 
a formal relationship, but a friendship with him. And I've met so many fr- people that become friends of mine just because they've watched me wrestle and I've interacted with them. So I, I really think that's such a beautiful thing and so many positive people. And then the attitude of the business has changed even in the last five years where there's, everyone's willing to help each other. It's not so, I, as they would say, cutthroat anymore. It, it's really, you see so many people trying to help each other out because there's so much work for everybody in so many different venues and so many different facets and styles. I mean, just look around you. There's so many different major places to work you have your lucha underground your ring of honor your impact and your evolve and you know of course you have your your main product that there's so many different styles with which you can work and now aew coming out which is just remarkable and terrific and there's so many places to work you hear of people now wanting to leave the wwe contracts to go work the independence because there may be more money for them on independence and more opportunity to express themselves without limitation so that really is a beautiful thing people are you know, developing and the fact that we do have the social media platform that the good is really standing out. You didn't have to wait for somebody to be on a television product, you know, promoted by WWE in order to realize that they had talent. And there were so many limited spots even 10 years ago on the roster. And that's really all you had. You had your WWE and sort of ROH and Impact and they were really developing. But now you, you, with such a worldwide platform, what's good is good and what's good will get out there to people. And it, we're in such a boom time. I feel like we're in the renaissance of wrestling. Um, there's so many talented people, you know, of course you're going to have your, your, your bad things, you know, everybody knows the old hot dog and the handshake story. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, brother, you know, uh, thanks for coming out, brother. Here's your hot dog and your handshake. And you know, you, so everyone knows this, all the stories. You don't really have to relate them. And of course, you know, we always have your things, especially as we had related before about people on the, you know, the more independent level, maybe not having the best gear and, you know, having t-shirts because they're bought, they're not. They don't want to show off the body because they're not in very good shape. And, and you, you're always going to have that. If you look for the bad, you'll certainly find flaw. You can find flaw with anything. Uh, but I much prefer to look at what is good. And we're in such a great time for wrestling. So many places to work. So many tremendous people. You know, and so many people willing to help others in a way that we've really never seen before. Well, in a way I've, I've never quite seen before. That's awesome. I, I'm, I'm glad that we've had such a, a positive experience here in this interview and getting to know you a little bit and well, what's going on there. So where um where you, where can people usually catch you uh, out out there uh, promotion wise? I'm sort of um, all over the place right now. Um, and so that's a really good question because I could be working one promotion one month and not be there the next. Uh, <laughs> a lot of different places are reaching out to me to, to bring me in, but steadily it looks like right now. At the moment, um, Rampage Wrestling, uh, 1CW, uh, Outbreak Pro Wrestling is another one. I'm going to hopefully return to Monster Factory Pro Wrestling soon. I just worked with them last month. Um, so ho- hopefully if things go well, I'll be working again more steadily with them. Um, but mainly those four or five promotions in that area um, is where you'll see me. And then offhand, you know, if you follow me on social media, you'll see other places. You know, I'm booked at ACWA this coming weekend. And that's a place I've been working for steadily when they run. They they run every so often, but I, I work for them steadily, also in Pennsylvania. So there's, there's many different places um, I work at. If you follow me on social media, you can keep up with me and see exactly which promotion I'll be at at which time. Awesome. And where can people find you on social media, especially if they want to get you uh, in one of their local promotions here? Sure. Um, you can find me. The, most people follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash xgraywolfx. That's graywolf with an E. Um, you can find me on Instagram if you'd like to find me there. It's Grey Wolf Raventhorn. Raventhorn spelled R A V E N T H O R N E. And if you'd like to find me on Twitter, that's T L W underscore Grey Wolf. There you go. Or the last uh, Grey Wolf. You can find me on all the major three platforms. Um, also, I have a YouTube which, to which I don't dedicate too much attention, but will be posting things in the future. Um, and it's Grey Wolf Raventhorn also if you like to follow me on my Twitter. Uh, definitely go search out that YouTube and look forward to new content because I, I really enjoyed the Planet Fitness video that was on there. Ah. Like I said, that's that's the one that I shared around. I was like, and, and I was I was hoping I was like, oh, there's going to be more, and, and, and there wasn't. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear that well, there's going to be more. Yeah, well, there's, we're actually working on one right now. I, I had the voice voiceover work done for it tonight, and it's going to be exciting when I do post it. I hopefully will be posting it in the week, and we'll hopefully be posting more YouTube content. I just sort of got, as I said, I'm not very comfortable in that sort of media unless it's a production. And I just haven't the equipment or the team to put the energy into it that I'd like to devote to make it what I want it. So when I can get to do that, I most certainly will. 
Yeah, judging by these other things, I can't see what that how that vision comes out there. Thank you so much, Gray Wolf Wait, Raventhorn. You can check him out. Uh, like I said, check him out on the social media. And of course, uh, we have a couple matches from his uh, time here with the Renegade Wrestling Alliance in the Pittsburgh area over at IndieWrestling.us uh, if you want to go check those out on VOD as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I say, hopefully we're bringing you guys a lot of uh, different uh, faces that uh, you're discovering and looking out there uh, for out there on your social media and YouTube and, and discovering this awesome, awesome, varied world of independent pro wrestling. So until next time, please support Indie Wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.